While it feels almost impossible now to remember, there really was once a time where every person on earth did not seem to have an opinion on Kevin Durant. There was a time we didn't dissect every IG post he made, didn't debate whether or not he did or did not bear any resemblance to a certain baked good. But that time, my <laughs> friends, has passed. And pretending otherwise seems foolish, which is why I'm confused at what I'm watching developing now. First, there was the interview that KD gave to Yahoo's Chris Haynes last month, where he said he didn't know if he was really going to miss the entire 2019-20 season with that Achilles injury he suffered during the finals. Then there was the YouTube video that Durant did with Chris Henderson. Kevin said he's not, quote, starting off the season playing, as opposed to saying he's missing the season, which is a choice of phrase that could mean absolutely nothing, but didn't stop the New York Post from headlining a story afterward titled, Kevin DeGrant gives Nets reasons, fans reasons to hope for an early return. Then just this weekend, another New York Post article reporting that Nets GM Sean Marks has also, quote, refused to rule Durant out for this season. The piece then went on to say that, quote, the feeling within the league is trending toward KD potentially playing this season. Now, there's a lot of qualifiers in that sentence, right? Trending toward, potentially. The article also doesn't say who is having this feeling about KD possibly returning early. Is it people who actually know the pace of Kevin's rehab? Or people who heard something from someone else, who heard something from someone else, who heard something? I mean, mm -hmm. the NBA is such a gossipy league. We have GMs who could give a class of third graders a real run for their money in a game of telephone, so no matter, though, apparently, because in the 36 hours since that article was published, well, it's been spun into dozens of aggregation headlines, like this one, mm-hmm, and this one, and this one. There's more. Remember, everything Kevin Durant does gets discussed and dissected, everything. This is no different, and now that the horse is so clearly out of the barn, it's starting to feel like a slow play repeat version of the drama that went on during this past NBA Finals. Remember all the rumors about when KD might come back from that strained calf injury? Remember the endless questions? How his teammates said it even unnerved them not to know what was going on? How the pressure on Kevin to play only mounted as the Warriors fell behind in the series? We all know what happened next. KD did play. He lasted exactly 11 minutes and 57 seconds before rupturing his Achilles. Are we really looking for all of that to happen all over again? I mean, we saw what happened with Kobe when he came back just eight months after rupturing his Achilles. Nine days later, he suffered a knee injury that knocked him out for the rest of that season. Boogie Cousins has had not one but two significant leg injuries since he returned from his Achilles rehab. If I'm KD, there's no way I'm pushing to fast track this recovery. But regardless of what I might actually decide to do with my rehab, I definitely would not let other people play the expectation game and start to create an environment where if I don't come back early, suddenly it's a disappointment. What's the downside in ruling himself out for the season? What's the downside in the net saying, nope, he's not playing, we'll see him in September of 2020? Does anyone think that if Brooklyn does rule him out for the year now, but then KD did actually somehow manage to come back early. The organization would be met with a bunch of, but you said he went out. Please, it would be fine. And it would certainly be preferable to what's already starting to happen. The bottom line is that whether he likes it or not, we are firmly in an era when people like to talk about Kevin Durant. That part is out of his control. But what they say and what kind of environment that creates for his recovery, he could have more of a say in that. And I hope he does soon before the situation mushrooms even more. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Bro, I'm out, man. That nigga's tripping. Gentlemen, good evening once again. Welcome back to the Lewis Basketball, Football, Baseball, Wrestling Network. It is your boy, Lewis, back with another one, with another banger with yet another video. So ladies and gentlemen, news in Brooklyn. Shout out to Brooklyn Nets fans all over. Uh, it is reported on Bleacher Report by, excuse me, sorry about that, by uh, by GM Sean Marks that Kevin Durant will likely pretty much miss the entire 2019-2020 season. And so what I got to say about that, ladies and gentlemen, is I think that Kevin Durant should miss the season. I think the most important thing for Kevin Durant is to get healthy. Make sure that you're 100% and then make sure that you're back on the court. I think that's the most important thing. Um, it doesn't make sense for Kevin Durant to rush back 
And then the next thing you know, Kevin Durant ends up getting hurt uh, because then it's going to be like his rehab and his comeback was pretty much wasted with uh, with no effort, pretty much. It's like it's really no effort. And you can say it's no effort because the effort is being made for you to come back. But then it was like it w wasn't worth anything because you got hurt again trying to rush to come back to try to prove to people that you're still the KD of old, that, you know, you can still dominate this game. And it's it's in his best interest to make sure that he does this intelligently and be wise about it. And most importantly, be patient. You know, you don't want to rush into things to, and next you know your career is pretty much over. Once again, your Achilles can then lead to many other injuries. And at this stage of Kevin Durant's career, that's the last thing he needs because it's going to be pretty much game over for him if that were to happen. So, so yeah, by uh, GM Sean Marks, who's done a wonderful job uh, building the building the Nets and the organization, having a strong culture, having a very good group of guys, good character guys, to where it's a very nice, safe, fun environment to play in. And I just think the best thing for Kevin Durant is just, again, Survey the landscape. Wait till next year. There's no need to rush and come back. And see where your Brooklyn Nets team is going to be this season. And see how it's going to be next year, man, because you never know. But once again, ladies and gentlemen, it is your boy Lewis back with another one. Let me know what you guys think in the comments of Kevin Durant missing the entire 2019-2020 season. Do you think he should sit? Or do you think that you're having wishful thinking and playing devil's advocate that he can come back? So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Never laugh, love. Thank you for watching. KD, I hope that he finds happiness. If you can't find happiness at Golden State, where are you going to find it at? First of all, give Steph Curry a lot of credit for saying, you know what? I'm a two-time MVP. I'm willing to take a back seat because I want to win. Give Clay Thompson a lot of credit saying, you know what? Because you know whose game suffered the most? was Clay Thompson. How do you get that rhythm going when you're not getting the touches? Exactly. He used to get a lot more touches before KD got there. And he said, you know what? I'm okay with that as long as we win the championship. Draymond Green, even he had to take a backseat. So, Kevin, if you won back-to-back -back titles, you MVP of the finals as well, where are you going to find happiness at? I just want him to find happiness because when I look at Michael Jordan, I look at Kobe Bryant, this brother, Kevin Durant, is one of the greatest scorers we've ever seen in NBA history. Absolutely. NBA history. So I just want him to be happy, but I don't know where he's going to find it at if he can't find it at Golden State. Yourself, and what would you like people to know about you? Uh, I'm a fun guy. Uh, obviously, I love the game of basketball. Um, I mean, it's just more question you have to ask me um, in order for me to talk about myself. I just can't give you a whole spiel. I don't even know where you're sitting at. Like. <laughs> <laughs> He's right there. Yeah, the glasses, there you go. All right. yeah. <laughs> Kevin Durant, I don't know if you've heard this, but he decided to leave the Warriors for the Nets this summer. Is it come out yet? I don't know. Magic Johnson was on first take this morning. He addressed that and, and also Durant's comments that member Durant said in the magazine article recently that over time he felt like he was a little separated from some of the guys who had been drafted into the organization that it was KD and the Warriors. Here's Magic on first take today. I just want him to find happiness because when I look at Michael Jordan, I look at Kobe Bryant, this brother Kevin Durant is one of the greatest scores we've ever seen in NBA history. Absolutely. NBA history. So I just want him to be happy, but I don't know where he's going to find it at if he can't find it at Golden State. Okay, well, KD responded to that on Twitter. Quote, horrible take, just regurgitated BS. Now, Durant has since deleted the tweet, but Richard, it's the internet. It's going to live forever. What is your reaction to Kevin Durant tweeting that about Magic? I, I think Kevin Durant is telling the truth. A at the end of the day, it was, and everyone knows this, hence the we won before you were here statement by Draymond. 
they, they had guys that were drafted there that are going to be legends there. And he showed up. They had already won. And so he always felt a disconnect. And so he can find happiness in a place where he builds something similar to what he had the opportunity to do in Oklahoma City. So I don't think that what Magic Johnson is saying is correct. There are places for him to find happiness in a place where he builds something himself. Well, I mean, I, this is always going to follow him, right? When As soon as he left Oklahoma City, it followed him to Golden State. When he leaves Golden State, it's going to follow him to Brooklyn. And, and I think that he ultimately he needs to stop caring about what anybody else thinks and just be happy. Right? The only way you're going to be happy is if you're happy yourself. Like, it's not going to be because Magic thinks you can be happy. or right? Like, you have to find that from within yourself. And I think people who got to know Kevin in Golden State the last couple of years, like the first year he was there, people, it felt like, oh, he might be okay. And then he won. And he wasn't happy enough. It didn't. It didn't get him to the place he thought it would get him. And I think that's when all that stuff about you know what he talked about in the magazine article with J.R. Moringer said you know like I wasn't part of the guy, group of guys. I wasn't that. That wasn't my team. It didn't feel like that. I think it's all true. I yeah. think that's how yeah. he felt. Well, it's the truth. I mean, look. Here's two things. First of all, if Magic Johnson goes on TV and talks about Kevin Durant. I'm okay with Kevin Durant responding to that. This is not just some random fan in the comments of Instagram. Mm -hmm. By the way, (laughs) he's allowed to do two, but I would maybe say, hey, maybe not so much of that. Um, But this is one of the top players of all time coming out and talking about you. I think it's okay if you want to respond to that. What I like about what Kevin did this time that I think is very different from when he left Oklahoma City is he has talked about his reasons. He Mm -hmm. did do an interview with an outside entity. When he left Oklahoma City, he did that Players' Tribune article that we've seen memed like a million times and it was just sort of the PR spin of what he wanted to say which I I get it but then you're not really answering the big looming questions or criticisms about you out there by sitting down with someone and doing a thoughtful long interview he really got out how he was feeling and what you guys have just said about oh he enumerated Mm -hmm. this that and the other and that makes sense to me it lets fans in a little bit on on why these moves happen and he doesn't owe that to people but if he doesn't want people to be critical, they have to understand him a little bit better. Yeah. And he did that this time. And yeah. I actually think it's going to help with all of this. It's the reason we're all sitting here saying, yeah. yeah, if he wants to clap back at Magic Johnson or feel that way, we're good with it because of him explaining himself a mm-hmm. little more. He doesn't owe it to us, but doing it did make his path easier. I have no 